Hey, Joe Gilder here. I want to show you something. As you probably know, I use Studio One as my software and I use the Presona Studio Live as my mixer. And one of my favorite things, um, and I've been doing it for years in different forms, I want to show you, it's, it's, this is a completely super nerdy thing, but it's just kind of demonstrates once you start to understand how audio works, you can start to kind of create interesting solutions to particular problems that you might have. So here's, here's what I'm showing you. Um, I don't have a camera over the mixer, but let me show you universal control. In case you don't know, if you've got a Studio Live mixer, you can control it using universal control. So this, if it, it big spoiler alert, a digital mixer is basically just software in a box. And that box happens to have actual faders and buttons, but I could literally put the box over there in the floor and just have this app in front of me and achieve the same results, just obviously less fun. So if I move my vocal fader here, you can see that moving on the screen. Okay, I'm moving in real life. So this is just a, a visual representation of what I've got in front of me. So what's interesting is in my, in, in my world, a lot of what I spend my time doing, aside from making music, is talking to you, getting picked up by this microphone, and then the audio that I play back from Studio One or anything else comes down in a different channel on my board. And ideally, I don't want to wear headphones all day because it just gets annoying. I want to listen out of my speakers. I've got these Persona Scepters here. Um, and, but I, when I listen to things on speakers, I want to just hear... You, right now, the way I've got it set up, you're hearing my voice. And if I switch to Studio One and hit play, you hear the music you hear the music as well. Um, but you, what you may have wondered sometimes is if I'm playing music out of speakers, then that music is getting picked up by the microphone, which means you're going to hear the music, but you're also going to hear the sound of the music in the microphone, which is going to make it sound worse, right? Yes, that would be true if I didn't mute this microphone every time I played audio. The problem is sometimes I would forget to mute, but more importantly, I would sometimes forget to unmute when I was done, because I actually can't hear my own voice right now. It's going to you, but it's not routed to my speakers, so I don't have any feedback and things like that, which makes things a little more complicated. So I would maybe mute my voice, play you a clip of audio, and then unmute my voice and or, or stop the music, and I'd forget to unmute my voice. And so then we're just left with, I'm talking and you can't hear me, and it's super awkward. I've done an entire video with my voice muted and I had to redo the whole thing. I've done an entire video where I forgot to press record on the recording software for the video. <laughs> so I got done and there was nothing to edit because I forgot to press record. Anyway, you do this as long as I have, 16 years as of this month. Uh, you've learned, made a lot of mistakes. But anyway, I wanted a way to automate this to where when there's music playing, this gets shut off. And when the music stops, this comes back on. So how do we do that? The for our first clue is there's got to be some sort of side chaining involved, meaning I want the music signal to trigger this to turn off. Specifically, I want the music signal to trigger a really aggressive compressor on this microphone that just turns it down 60 dB or whatever, which is basically muted. And I figured out a way to do it. So let me show you. On universal control because there's actually i'm gonna show you a secondary thing we can do uh using this same principle which is also kind of interesting too so uh here is my voice here is where the music comes down here on this mac channel so if we click on this v vo stands for voiceover i've got a compressor set up if we zoom in you'll see the threshold is all the way down the ratio is all the way up attack is set to one millisecond release is set to 100 milliseconds because if you do a really fast release it can sound kind of weird and digitally so that feels like reasonable but it's still it's still to you and me it's still pretty quick right it's a tenth of a second so it's not like it's super slow the only difference here is under this key source you can see it's listening to channel one this vocal is channel three you can see right there this is channel three but it's not listening to my voice there's no compression on my voice it's listening to the playback from channel three. It's listening to the input of channel one. So this is channel three. It's listening to channel one, which is where I'm playing back audio from studio one. So check out what happens. Move this down. When I hit play on the music, watch this compressor. C. 
see, it goes down, compresses pretty quickly. I could probably make this release a little bit quicker, 50 milliseconds or so. Uh, all right, I hit play. And then it lets go. So now I'm going to talk over this so you can hear what happens. I hit play. I'm going to continue to talk. Can you hear me at all? I don't know if you can hear me, but now I know you can hear me again. It turned me down. And if there's a really, really quiet piece of music, I'll press the mute button on my voice too, just to mute it entirely. But generally, it's turned it down so much so that any amount of music that would be added in is negligible and is not a problem. And so now I can press play in Studio One. My microphone gets muted, I get muted, I can listen, and then when I stop playback, I can just start talking again. The only time it messes me up is when there's a big reverb tail. It's like down here later in the song, there's these big reverby vocals. And if I start talking while that reverb tail is still happening, you could hear my voice was turned way down and eventually came back up. Uh, that's that's this idea. So it's kind of a, I call it the, my magical self-muting microphone because it mutes when I need it to. Now, how could this apply to you on recording sessions? Here's where it gets exciting. What if there was a way for whenever, here's, here's what happens. When I do tracking sessions, I did a video recently on setting up for a tracking session here in my studio with drums, bass, and me on guitar. We all have headphones or in-ear monitors, right? And so a lot of times we want to we wanna talk to each other while we're working out the song, but it can be annoying to, especially for, they both use like custom molded in-ears. And so it can be annoying to have to pull, yank those out every time we want to talk and then put them back in when we want to record. Because when they're in, you really can't hear everybody around you. Ideally, what you would do is have microphones set up to where we could talk to each other through microphones and hear it in our headphones. And then we don't have to keep taking our headphones off to hear each other. As silly as it sounds, um, I can usually sometimes hear Tim on the drums because he's got a thousand microphones around him, but it's surprisingly hard to hear him because he's not nearly as loud as a snare drum. And then Joel over here on bass, there is no microphone near him, so I really can't hear him at all. So we're playing that game of constantly taking our headphones off and putting them back on. Not the end of the world, but I, I, I had a sneaky suspicion there's got to be a way to solve this problem to where when, <clears throat> when we're not recording, we can hear each other. Because the, the answer, simple answer would be, we'll just give each of you a microphone or set up one mic in the middle of the room that's like maybe omnidirectional that picks up everyone and you can hear that. The problem, of course, with that is once we start recording, that microphone's going to be super loud. I want to hear the mics on the drum kit. I don't want to hear that vocal talkback mic while we're hanging out and talking. I just want to hear it when we're when we're in between performing, when we're not actually tracking. And so I actually, it was a years ago, it was the, the Mixer Man, Daily Adventures of Mixer Man talked about this specific, um, they would use time code on the tape machine. And they set it up to where the time code was running to a gate that would gate all the microphones whenever the time code was present. And then the gates would open up and let you hear the microphones whenever it wasn't. And that gave me my idea. I couldn't do it with a gate because it was a special kind of gate that worked that way where when the signal was present, it would gate. Typically gates open when the signal goes away. I want the opposite. I want the signal to shut down. I want the microphones to shut down when Studio One playback is happening. And then I want the mics to open back up. But I don't want it to do like I just showed you. Because when we're recording, we're going to have, if nothing else, we're going to have the click track coming from Studio One. And we may be listening to stuff we already recorded that we want to be able to hear. So I don't need the, the talkback mics to be triggered off of audio from Studio One. I need something else. I'm going to show you how I would set that up. So the first thing I do is create a new track. And we're going to call it Tone. It's just a single mono track. Um, doesn't matter what the input is. And we're going to set it. We're going to take it out. It's not going to be in any of the folders. It's going to be kind of down here by itself. Okay. And then we're going to put on this track, we're going to add the tone generator. Did you know Studio One has a tone generator plugin? It looks like this. And we can set it to, it defaults to 440. But if we turn it on, which um, I always forget, there we go, power button. That made one of my guitars ring. So that is a tone sound. So now, check this out. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to mute the channel for a second so we don't hear it. Or I'm going to 
turn the fader all the way down because we don't need to hear this. Um, but I want to basically create audio. Sorry, this is getting really convoluted, but I'm kind of excited. I want to basically create an audio version of that tone generator. So I'm going to make it like super long in case we play for a really long time. And I'm going to go, I'm going to solo this. And I'll just I'll just mute it right now. We don't need to hear it right now. Um, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna right click. Actually, let's see if this will work. Let me right click and just transform to rendered audio. Um, preserve real time state. Okay, let's just see what happens. Okay, it didn't do anything because there was no audio to render. Um, so what I'll do instead is I'll do export mix down. We'll call this tone. We'll export it as a wave, not an MP3. We'll go between the loop and we will choose the import to track setting right here. And I'm going to say, okay. And the output will make it, I guess it's going to be mono. All right. So give me one second while that exports. Okay, here we go. So now it spit out this mono chunk of audio, this tone track here. So I can get rid of this track now. And now I've got this tone track. So whenever I hit play, well, hang on. When I hit play, we hear the tone. So now what do we do? Well, I never actually want to hear this. I just want to use this tone to trigger a compressor elsewhere. So all I got to do is set the output of this channel, this tone track, to something different. So I'm actually going to go into my I.O. setup. I've got a channel on my board that I don't use. It's channel 32. Come to the output tab. Add new. We'll call this... We'll just call it tone everywhere so we don't lose track. And that's going to be a mono channel that goes out channel 32 on my mixer. Apply. Okay. So now if I hit play, whoops, I got to route it. Let me send this to, let me output this to my tone output. There we go. So now whenever I hit play, that is coming out. It's playing, but it's actually going off to a channel on my board that I never even care to listen to. It's actually like I'm not even listening to it. However, I can come over here and I can tell my microphone, I can set up as many microphones as I want, and on each one I set up a compressor the same way we did with this one. Now, instead of the key source being in my playback from Studio One, I just set the key source to channel 32. So now it should behave exactly the same way. Let's check it over here. I hit play in Studio One. Oh, doesn't work. I actually can turn the compressor off. Let's try it now. Exactly. So I know this is this is getting tweaky. So what's happening right now? Basically, I've changed it to where instead of having my mic being muted by music, it's now muted by playback. Whenever the playhead is moving, even if we come way out here on the end of the song where there's no music happening, if I hit play in Studio One, it's going to mute my microphone. Testing, testing. It turned my microphone down whenever Studio One was playing because it's being triggered by this event, this audio here that only happens when Studio One is playing. So why does this matter? If we're doing a tracking session, there's nothing, There's it's a blank session. We're not listening to anything coming out of Studio One, but I need a way for the microphone to know when, when we're playing and when we're not. And the only way it can really know is if it listens to a tone coming from Studio One. So while we're practicing and the mic's open, that's fine. But once we record, once we hit playback or record and playback is happening, all of our microphones will get muted. And then when I hit spacebar to stop, all the microphones come back on. Specifically the microphones that we're using for our talkback. So I would just have to set up this compressor on each channel being listening to that key source of channel 32 and then whatever microphones i have i can have one on everybody's face it's when the playback is happening and the recording is rolling playback is rolling or we're actually recording as long as the the playhead is moving in studio one those microphones will get muted now how could we do this let's say you use studio one you don't have a mixer like i do the same principle applies i wanted to show you this way so then you can go figure out if you ever want to do this on your own system the way it would work is very similar you would just have 
your individual talkback mics set up as individual channels in Studio One, and then you would have a compressor on them that's being sidechained from this tone track. Same idea, you just would you could turn the tone track down, you don't have to send it to a dedicated output most likely, but you could just have each of those compressors listening to it, and so whenever this is playing, those get muted, and then otherwise they turn back on. So, this is, this is, I almost didn't do this video because I'm like, this is super nerdy and tweaky, but I have a sneaky suspicion that there is a nerdy and tweaky contingent among us, and I wanted to show you how this works. So, for I haven't used this in a long time, but for a long time, this tone track was a part of my template. So every template that I had had this tone track, which means I had this sine wave playing back on a random channel on my mixer at all times for years and years and years. In the off chance, I wanted to use it to turn off any talkback microphones in the band. Super fun, super tweaky. See you in the next one.